Office 365 and uh, Microsoft 365, where we're headed. What I'm excited about and run down the hallways, get other people excited about it too. Live from Studio 46 in the Citrix Broadcast Studios, it's Tech Talks To Go. I'm your host, Sean Donahue. Tech Talks To Go is an informal, conversational series that features industry experts and subject matter heroes. We talk about the subjects you want to talk about and dive deep into technical matter. Now, let's see who's on this week's version of Tech Talks To Go. Hey, right. welcome back to another edition of Tech Talks to Go. And again, I know I say it on every episode, but I am super excited to have this guest joining me on Tech Talks to Go today. It is none other than Kurt Moody, longtime Citrite. We'll get into that, but I've always said to my executive producer, Kathy, as this series gets more and more popular, our stars, our guest stars are going to become more and more prominent, and we are knocking it out of the park here today. Of course, we're talking about Kurt Moody. Kurt, welcome to the broadcast. Hey, Sean. Thanks. Uh, yeah, always, always fun. Great talking to you, man. All right. And you're here <laughs> today to talk about what? What is our topic today? Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Citrix, Citrix Workspaces, I assumed Citrix. Microsoft <laughs> Office 365, and uh, maybe a little bit of Microsoft 365 as well. Awesome. Kind of where we're headed, what we've been doing, and uh, you know what what I'm excited about. And my job is to run down the hallways and try to get other people excited about it too, which it's relatively easy to do with Microsoft. So, so if you see him Kurt running down the hallways of Citrix, watch out because he is excited about. <laughs> Office 365, and I'm glad you're here today because I got some questions about Office 365. I'm sure our audience does as well. But, Kurt, as we do on every show, before we get into uh, the nits and the grits of uh, Office 365, the three T's of Mr. Kurt Moody, your title here at Citrix today, your tenure, how long you've been here, and then task, what do you actually do on a day-to-day -day basis that keeps you out of trouble? Kurt? Sure, man. So, uh, first of all, if you see me running down the hallway anywhere, watch out just in general because I'm with clots. I'll fall on you. Um, so, what's my title? So, uh, technically, my title is uh, Director of Product Marketing. I work in the Workspace Services Group. Uh, the reality is, and, and, and I guess what I, I still have as my bio is, I'm a dude that does stuff at Citrix. Okay. Um, I, I've held just about every technical position you could have at Citrix over my wow 25 year tenure actually december 21st 20th will be the 25th year i've i've been around citrix yeah. so i've been there pretty much close to the beginning i wouldn't Very say close. exactly the beginning it was i started out in technical support and kind of uh slugged our way through the os2 days on the way up through uh winframe and everything else what was the so product, I've been a product manager like and everything else oh wow when i started it was still citrix multi-user so it was uh <laughs> A, a small gray box yeah. uh, then we came up with the winning name a plus server series which never made sense to me and then it went to winframe yeah uh and and that's when everything really kind of accelerated and, and uh, the company really kind of grew leaps and bounds in in that era and i believe you kind of came on board into the ecosystem right around that time frame as as well sure uh so known you a long long time Very it's, long. it's, it's yes. been a, a cool evolution obviously Microsoft as our partner has been a big deal the entire time, a core enabler of Citrix. Yep. So, yeah. I brought my Microsoft backpack in today specifically for this conversation. Very cool, very cool. I'm going to hand control over to you uh, in case you have any slides. I like to say, you know, Tech Talks to Go, no scripts, no rules, no slides, but we use slides as, you know, our crutches every now and then to frame. Uh, our conversations. Um, so, in that regard, you mentioned workspace, um, and it's gone through a couple evolutions of the term. But when we say Citrix workspace, what are we talking about? What's if we were to cut through the marketing stuff? What's actual? What do we mean by Citrix workspace? Well, when we're talking about the Citrix workspace we're really talking about the secure delivery of applications to users over any device in any environment, really. I mean, 
uh, and and that's that's kind of a very broad brush that we put, paint on that. But the the point is is applications continue to evolve. They've evolved for a very long time. The legacy applications tend to not really go away anytime soon, and newer applications come online. And all of the applications, regardless of the era in which they're um, invented or implemented, uh, bring with them certain challenges around um, usability, especially from a remote access and security perspective, but also around uh, different network conditions. Mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 you know, one of the places that Citrix has really played a key role uh, over that, you know, 25 year arc that, that I've been involved really has to do with uh, access from different types of devices, whether it was from the wind terms in the early days and, and different PCs, whether or not it had to do with their processing power that weren't ready to execute certain versions of Windows, Windows apps, or even 32 bits in the early days, yeah. all the way through mobility and what we're faced with now with the consumerization uh, and, and, and really how the end users and bring your own device has influenced how IT needs to do its business. When you then add on top of that, all of the new um, innovations and initiatives that are going on around cloud adoption uh, and, and the efficiencies and the accelerated innovation curve that cloud economics and cloud development bring to the table, all of these, uh, you know, innovation waves of applications and desktops and, and, and various other mechanisms, especially around networking uh, and remote access, just continue to compound. So what the workspace does is really is there to deliver a really great user experience on accessing those resources, mm -hmm. regardless of the type of application, whether it's SaaS, Windows, legacy apps, um, or to then ease the let's say, advertisement of those resources and the management of those resources from IT to those users, okay. whether they're corporate users or contractors and things like that. So the workspace is there to secure the you know the individual use case for the individual user while allowing IT to kind of expand what the concept of the perimeter mm -hmm. to what the user needs rather than a specific network location yeah does that make sense makes okay totally and at the trade shows conferences user groups etc cetera, etc cetera, people look at office 365 and I think there's there's kind of a misconception as to what it is is it office in a browser is it word in a browser excel in a browser uh and a browser fied version of my popular office apps or is it something different a new subscription model what the heck is it's it, it's microsoft so it's all of the above i mean that, that that's the beauty of it right so office 365 specifically is cloud-based delivery of collaboration and productivity applications and back-end services from Microsoft. And that's actually why um, I, I really didn't want to have a whole lot of marketing slides up here. I thought uh, putting up this view of Office 365 really kind of as, as the background to where we began talking kind of starts it because it maps directly to the, the, the question you're asked. So the, the, the way this is built out is, this is usually the first view that any user gets of Office 365. Okay. Whenever they are provisioned, they get the, uh, the welcome email from their administrator or what have you. So it's, it's presented as a web portal and a page. Those are called tiles where the individual applications are. Mm -hmm. And this is, um, We'll, we'll get into some of the challenges that, 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 that this presents around the mindset of what is Office 365, but it also influences how do I deliver Office 365 and how do I deliver on the promise of Office 365, Microsoft 365, Citrix workspaces in the context of all of the other stuff I've implemented over the last couple of decades as client server computing evolved into web computing evolved into now what we see as workspaces and DAS. Okay. So that, th this is kind of that boom, that, that, that first user experience. Um, but I it's have kind of interesting tiles. to me. Go ahead. Sorry, I have tiles here for Word and Excel. Am I actually launching Word and Excel from this portal? And before you answer that, I also see you've got, I'm pointing to my screen. This is, this is professional <laughs> video stuff here. You point to your screen where the, where the viewers can't see what you're doing. Uh, is uh -huh. I have an install office 2016 
spot, uh, you know, click in as well. So uh, you're, you're, you're leading the witness, uh, your honor. So, so that, that, that's the challenge, right? So, and it, it actually creates, um, some very interesting IT challenges when a user is faced with this, obviously the, the first thing that somebody's going to do is like, Oh, mail, I need to get the mail. And then it, it opens up mail and I'll show you those experiences in a while, but that install office three 2016 button, um, has proven to be somewhat disruptive hmm. to the way people gain their first experience here because the knee jerk reaction for anyone who wants to run the desktop applications is to click on that install button and begin installing. Right. Which when you're dealing with a hosted scenario uh, can, can wreak a little bit of, of havoc just because of the way the installer works, the way you have to install in certain scenarios, which we can get into in just a minute. Uh, but it but it presents immediately presents that conflict that I was talking about earlier between the consumerization and the user experience of consuming these applications uh, with what IT is tasked with delivering. And Office 365, absolutely very very popular system, growing in popularity, um, presents some of these challenges. So as you, you as you look at these tiles. Now, you said a hosted scenario, it causes right. problems in, or causes confusion in a hosted scenario. Are we talking about now just to baseline back to all our viewers here? Are we talking about like when you, you're running a virtual desktop in a hosted environment? Is that what you mean by hosted scenario? Whether you're running a, a virtual desktop or you're running, you know, Zen apps server sessions mm -hmm. uh, or even just in a, a standard um Microsoft or Citrix service provider hosted delivery model where you're delivering a what we would consider a finished goods suite of applications um, whenever a user starts trying to install applications where they are not necessarily controlled by the service providers or IT which is basically an internal service provider it starts to wreak havoc with lifecycle management help desk calls, those kinds of things. Yeah. So this this kind of adds that. But yes, to your question, um, when I'm saying hosted, I am meaning primarily uh, RDS, Zen app, VDI, Zen desktop type delivery models. Okay. Um, okay, and, and one of the reasons these tiles exist is this also presents a form factor for mobile devices. Right, and this is Microsoft's answer to at least advertising these applications on different devices. Citrix extends that. We'll get into that because I don't want to park on this particular slide too too much. Yep. But to your to your point, so, so these tiles that are there, you get these different user interfaces and different experiences once you move past this initial portal, right? So when you're talking about mobility. Right, here's an example. Microsoft does deliver Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, Link, a lot of those productivity apps across different form factors, mm -hmm. whether it's the different Surface devices, the, the, the Windows mobile phones, or other mobile phones. Uh, but when you get into different endpoint operating systems, like the difference between iOS, Android, and Windows, the experience is different if you're writing like native transmuted applications of say word where you have to use them differently and everything else and there tends to be a lack of continuity around how i use those those uh systems okay. and then as you can tell kind of on the right the applications look differently on those different devices right as Which well so up the, people who are using them because it's not an intuitive interface from one device correct. to another it's not seamless. It, it, it leads to help desk calls. It leads to training that's necessary and, and those types of things. But that's just moving to a mobile device. Then you have other options. So uh, when a user wants to move to uh, a, a richer user experience that fits a larger form factor, the next thing they tend, tend to want to do is use like Outlook Web Access, which is basically clicking on that mail tile, and it opens up a full web version of those applications, right? Which again, is a different user experience than the mobility experience. Right. And then as we're all used to, you can use the full Outlook client, especially if you have an installed version of Office Professional Plus 2016 and Outlook 2016, then you get those full capabilities that you're used to. And we'll kind of get into why someone would want to use 
that full desktop application in just a moment, which is really where we get into those hosted and VDI scenarios that we're talking about. Yeah. Citrix plays a role in delivering continuity of experience across all of those devices and access types, uh, regardless of what the user needs to do or the device or operating system they might be using. Right. That's a, a big yeah. function of the hosted side of hosted apps and desktops in the overall Citrix workspace. Now, do you find, do people prefer, and I know I have my own preference, but do people prefer a web-based, let's just take Outlook, a web-based flavor of Outlook versus the full rich client install of Outlook? What's the, what's the user like better? I, I think, I, I don't know that it maps quite as cleanly to the user. It's, it's usually the user plus what they're doing and a, where they're at, what their location is, what the time is and what they need to get done. And actually that's a pretty good uh, segue. So it's almost this like is an S5. This. Right, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, and people are not gonna believe us when we say we didn't, but you know, <laughs> I'll, I'll trip it up enough to where they won't. Um, so Android S5, right? This is the device I use every day. And this has secure mail on it and, and all the other extensions that Citrix does through the workspace to Office 365. And we can talk about that as we move forward. Mm -hmm. But we're probably gonna have to cut this thing up into to multiple segments. I by think, the time you know, because it's Kurt system. Moody, I'm saying, I'll just scrap all the other interviews. It's the Kurt Moody Show. Special thanks to our guest, Kurt Moody, today to talk about Office 365. Don't forget, subscribe to this channel to get updates on more Tech Talks to go. Read the blog, citrix.com slash blogs, and just look for Kurt Moody. Also, go to citrix.com slash Microsoft for your one-stop shop for all collateral Citrix and Microsoft related. Follow us on Twitter, look for emails about future episodes, and don't forget, leave your topics, questions, and comments down below in the comments section. Also, don't forget to subscribe. It's one click.